Hello and welcome to this session on Leucippus of Miletus. Leucippus of Miletus is an earliest Greek philosopher who developed the theory of atomism. Atomism is the idea that everything is composed entirely of various imperishable, indivisible elements called atoms. The name Leucippus is often associated as master to pupil with that of Democritus, the philosopher who was also touted as the originator of the atomic theory. As a philosophical heir of Democritus, Epicurus's word has some weight, and indeed a controversy over this matter raged in German scholarship for many years at the close of the 19th century. Furthermore, in his Corpus Democritum, Thrasyllus of Alexandria, an astrologer and writer living under the emperor Tiberius, compiled a list of writings on atomism that he attributed to Democritus to the exclusion of Leucippus. The present consensus among the world's historians of philosophy is that this Leucippus is historical. The matter must remain arguable unless more information is forthcoming from the record. The philosopher Protagoras was born in Abdera and he was a contemporary of Leucippus. But Protagoras, the first of the Sophists, spent almost of his life living in Athens and may have left Abdera before Leucippus arrived there. Although now there seems little doubt that Leucippus existed, it is worth remarking that Epicurus, at the end of the 4th century BC, actually believed that Leucippus had never existed since so little was known of him. However, we now know enough in the way of independent evidence to be sure that Leucippus did exist. Leucippus was born in Miletus. Leucippus was indeed a shadowy figure, as his dates are not recorded, and he is often mentioned in conjunction with his more well-known pupil, Democritus. It is therefore difficult to determine which contributions to an atomic theory came from Democritus and which came from Leucippus. Leucippus was a contemporary of Zeno of Ilia and Empedocles. Leucippus has belonged to the Ionian school of naturalistic philosophy as Thales, Aleximander, Anaximenes, and he was interested in reality and not idealism as the Italic Iliatics were. Aristotle and his student Theophrastus, however, explicitly credit Leucippus with the invention of atomism. In Aristotelian terms, Leucippus agreed with the Iliatic argument that true being does not admit of vacuum, and there can be no movement in the absence of vacuum. Leucippus contended that, since movement exists, there must be empty space. However, he concludes that vacuum is identified with non-being, since nothing cannot really be. According to Aristotle, Leucippus differed from the Iliatics in not being encumbered by the conceptual intermingling of being and not being. And Plato made the necessary distinction between grades of being and types of negation. The title attributed to Leucippus is a lost work, Megas Diacosmos, which means the big world system. But this title was also attributed to Democritus, whose companion work was Micros Diacosmos, which means little world system. Fragments and demographical reports about Leucippus were collected by Hermann Dales. Dales was a leading proponent for Leucippus. Around 440 or 430 BC, Leucippus founded a school at Abdera in which his pupil Democritus was closely associated. And there is mention that a Leucippus founded the city of Metapontum, which honored this Leucippus with a coin. Diogenes Laetius reports that Leucippus was a student of Parmenides' follower, Zeno. Zeno is best known for paradoxes, suggesting that motion is impossible because a magnitude can be divided into an infinite number of parts, each of which must be traversed. The fact that atomism is thought to have been formulated in response to these arguments 
may account for the story that Leucippus was a student of Zeno. The extent of Leucippus's contribution to the developed atomist theory is unknown. His relationship to Democritus and even his very existence was a subject of considerable controversy in 19th century scholarship. Most reports on early Greek atomism refers to the views of Democritus alone or to both atomists together. Epicurus seems even to have denied that there was a philosopher Leucippus. Aristotle certainly ascribes the foundation of the atomist system to Leucippus. Leucippus is said to be the author of the work called The Great World System. One surviving quotation is said to have come from a work on mind. Atomist Doctrine Leucippus is named by most sources as the originator of the theory that the universe consists of two different elements, which he called the full or solid and the empty or void. Both the void and the solid atoms within it are thought to be infinite and between them to constitute the elements of everything. Because little is known of Leucippus' views and his specific contribution to atomist theory, a fuller discussion of the developed atomist doctrine is attributed to Democritus. Early Greek atomism is generally taken to have been formulated in response to the Eleatic claim that what is must be one and unchanging because any assertion of differentiation or change within what is involves the assertion of what is not, an unintelligible concept. While Parmenides' argument is difficult to interpret, he was understood in antiquity to have forced philosophers after him to explain how change is possible without supposing that something comes from what is not, that is, nothing. Aristotle tells us that Leucippus tried to formulate a theory that is consistent with the evidence of the senses, that change and motion and a multiplicity of things exist in the world. In the atomic system, change only occurs at the level of appearances. The real constitutes of being persist unchanged, merely rearranging themselves into new combinations that form the world of appearance. Like Parmenidian being, the atoms cannot change or disintegrate into what is not, and each is a solid unit. Nonetheless, the combination of atoms that form the world of appearance continually alter. Aristotle cites an analogy to the letters of the alphabet, which can produce a multitude of different words from a few elements in combinations. The differences all stem from the shape or schema of the letters, as A differs from N by the arrangement or taxes, as AN differs from NA, and by their positional orientations, which means thesis, as N differs from Z. Leucippus also reportedly accepted the Eleatic Melissus' argument that void is necessary for motion, but took this to be evidence that, since we experience motion, there must be void. The reason for positing smallest indivisible magnitudes is also reported to be a response to Zeno's argument that if every magnitude could be divided into infinity, motion would be impossible. Leucippus is reported to hold that the atoms are always in motion. Aristotle criticizes him for not offering an account that says not only why a particular atom is moving because it collided with another, but why there is motion at all. Because the atoms are indestructible and unchangeable, their properties presumably stay the same through all time. As Diogenes Laertius reports, Leucippus' cosmology, worlds or cosmoi, are formed when groups of atoms combine to form a cosmic world, which causes the atoms to separate out and sort by like kind. A sort of membrane of atoms forms out of the circling atoms, enclosing others within it and creating pressure by whirling. The outer membrane continually acquires other atoms from outside when it contacts them, which takes fire 
as they revolve and form the stars, with the sun in the outmost circle. Worlds are formed, grow and perish according to a kind of necessity. One direct quotation preserved from Lucipus says that, nothing happens in vain, but everything from logos and by necessity. This has been found puzzling since the reference to logos might seem to suggest that things are ruled by reason, an idea that Democritus' system excludes. Either Lucipus' system is different in this respect from that of Democritus, or the reference to logos here cannot be to a controlling mind. Barnes takes there to be no grounds for preferring either interpretation, but Taylor argues that Lucipus's position is that an account or logos can be given of the causes of all occurrences. There is nothing in other reports to suggest that Lucipus endorsed the idea of a universal intelligence governing events. Aristotle frequently pairs Lucipus and Democritus in his reports, including his account of the motivation for positing atoms and void. In particular, Aristotle associates Lucipus as well as Democritus with the deliberately paradoxical assertion that being is no more than not being. That is, that void exists as much as a full or solid. The more careful account in Simplicius shows that the no more doctrine is due to Democritus. Graham in 2008 suggests a new reading of Lucipus wherein the distinction between atom and void is actually based on a reading of Parmenides' Doxa, his cosmological account. Rather than logical abstractions, being and not being, Lucipus's atoms would in a sense be based on Parmenides' cosmological contraries, night and light. If this line of interpretation is followed, Lucipus's notion of atom and void might have been rather different from Democritus's, and Aristotle's tendency to refer to the two in conjunction somewhat is misleading. Thoughts, ideas, and contributions. Lucipus was the founder of atomism. We know next to nothing about his life, and his book appears to have been incorporated in the collected works of Democritus. No writer subsequent to Theophrastus seems to have been able to distinguish his teaching from that of his more famous disciple. Indeed, this very existence has been denied, though on wholly insufficient grounds. Aristotle gives a clear and intelligible account of the way Lucipus' theory arose. It originated from Parmenides' denial of the void, from which the impossibility of multiplicity and motion has been deduced. Lucipus supposed himself to have discovered a theory which would avoid this consequence. He admitted that there could be no motion if there was no void, and he inferred that it was wrong to identify the void with the non-existent. Lucipus was the first philosopher to affirm with a full consciousness of what he was doing the existence of empty space. The Pythagorean void has been more or less identified with air, but the void of Lucipus was really a vacuum. Besides space, there was body, and to this Lucipus ascribed all the characteristics of Parmenides' notion of the real. The assumption of empty space, however, made it possible to affirm that there was an infinite number of such reals invisible because of their smallness, but each possessing all the marks of Parmenidean one, and in particular, each indivisible like it. These mood in the empty space, and their combinations can give rise to the things we perceive with the senses. Pluralism was at least stated in a logical and coherent way. Democritus compared the motions of the atoms of the soul to that of the particles in the sunbeam which dart hither and thither in all directions, even when there is no wind, and we may fairly assume that he regarded the original motion of the other atoms 
in much the same way. The atoms are not mathematically indivisible like the Pythagorean monads, but they are physically indivisible because there is no empty space in them. Theoretically, then, there is no reason why an atom should not be as large as a world. Such an atom would be much the same thing as a sphere of Parmenides, where it's not for the empty space outside it and the plurality of worlds. As a matter of fact, however, all atoms are invisible. That does not mean, of course, that they are all the same size. For there is room for an infinite variety of sizes below the limit of the minimum visible. Lucifer explained the phenomenon of weight from the size of the atoms and their combustions, but he did not regard weight itself as a primary property of bodies. Aristotle distinctly says that none of his predecessors had said anything of absolute weight and lightness, but only of relative weight and lightness. And Epicurus was first to ascribe weight to atoms. Weight, for the early atomists, is only a secondary phenomenon, arising in a manner to be explained from excess of magnitude. It will be observed that, in this respect, the early atomists were far more scientific than Epicurus and even than Aristotle. The conception of absolute weight has no place in science, and it is really one of the most striking illustrations of the true scientific instinct of the Greek philosophers that no one before Aristotle ever made use of it, and Plato expressly rejected it. The first effect of the motion of the atoms is that the larger atoms are retarded, not because they are heavy, but because they are more exposed to impact than the smaller. In particular, atoms of an irregular shape become entangled with one another and form groups of atoms, which are still more exposed to impact and consequent retardation. The smallest and roundest atoms, on the other hand, preserve their original motions best, and these are the atoms of which fire is composed. In an infinite void in which an infinite number of atoms of countless shapes and sizes are constantly impinging upon one another in all directions, there will be an infinite number of places where a vortex motion is set up by the impact. When this happens, we have the beginning of a world. It is not correct to ascribe this to chance, as later writers do. It follows necessarily from the presuppositions of the system. The solitary fragment of Lucipus we possess is to the effect that not happens for nothing, but all things from a ground or logos and of necessity. Lucipus of Miletus carried on the scientific philosophy which had begun to become associated with Miletus. He founded the school at Abdera on the coast of Thrace near the mouth of the Nestos River. Today the town is in Greece and is called Avdera. At the time that Lucipus would have lived in Abdera, it was a prosperous town which politically was a member of the Delian League. Aristotle refers to Lucipus as a philosopher with rather different views to those of Parmenides. Aristotle refers to Lucipus and quotes from his works on a number of occasions. For example, in Decalo, Aristotle writes, quote, Of those who have maintained the existence of indivisibles, some, as for example Lucipus and Democritus, believe in indivisible bodies, others, like Xenocrates, in indivisible lines. Unquote. Unfortunately, Aristotle is not entirely consistent in his reference to Lucipus. Some quotes suggest that atomism began with Lucipus. Other quotes, such as the one above, bracket Lucipus and Democritus, while in a few places Aristotle seems to imply that Democritus alone invented atomism. Certainly, it seems that Lucipus was much influenced in his thinking by Zeno of Elia and by Parmenides. But it seems relatively unlikely that there is any truth in the later claim that he was a pupil of Zeno of Elia.
More likely, here is that later writers realized that Leucippus followed Zeno's ideas and pupil was intended in this sense. It is thought that Democritus was a pupil of Leucippus, where in this time, pupil really does have its standard meaning. Together, they are considered as the joint founders of atomic theory. Leucippus stated that atoms are, quote, imperceptible individual particles that differ only in shape and position, unquote. The mixing of these particles gives rise to the world we experience. The reason that some early writers did not believe in the existence of Leucippus seems to be because his views and those of Democritus became completely entwined. Quite soon the whole became attributed to Democritus, who was the more famous of the pair. It seems likely that Democritus, as a pupil of Leucippus, developed the ideas of his teacher, but it is quite beyond us to disentangle the contributions of each to this important doctrine. Two works, almost certainly written by Leucippus, are The Great World System and On the Mind. The first of these is attributed to Leucippus by Theophrastus. Theophrastus was a pupil of Aristotle, who had studied at Athens under Aristotle. Theophrastus became head of the Lyceum in Athens after Aristotle in 323 BC. He was in a position to be able to distinguish the works of Leucippus from those of Democritus, and we shall describe his views on this matter. Theophrastus claimed that the basic idea of atomism were present in the philosophy of Leucippus, according to which, quote, both matter and void have real existence. The constituents of matter are elements infinite in number and always in motion, with an infinite variety of shapes completely solid in composition." Unquote. According to Diogenes Laertius, the cosmology put forward by Leucippus in his work, The Great World System, is a creation of worlds by agglomerations of atoms by chance collisions. There is then differentiation with the smaller atoms being sent off into the infinity of space, while the rest form into a spherical structure with the larger atoms at the center and the smaller atoms farther away from the center. From the treatise On the Mind, we have the only quotation of the words of Leucippus which have survived. In this work, he writes, quote, Nothing happens in vain, but everything from reason and of necessity. Unquote. Leucippus also contributed to the method of exhaustion. The method of exhaustion is calculating an area by approximating it by the areas of a sequence of polygons. For example, filling up the interior of a circle by inscribing polygons with more and more sides. Let us summarize what we have discussed so far. Leucippus flourished 480 BC at Miletus on the west coast of Asia Minor. The Greek philosopher credited by Aristotle and by Theophrastus with having originated the theory of atomism. It has been difficult to distinguish his contribution from that of his most famous pupil, Democritus. Only fragments of Leucippus's writings remain, but two works believed to have been written by him are The Great World System and On the Mind. His theory stated that matter is homogeneous but consists of an infinity of small indivisible particles. These atoms are constantly in motion and through their collisions and regroupings form various compounds. A cosmos is formed by the collision of atoms that gather together into a whirl and the drum-shaped earth is located in the center of man's cosmos. He died on 420 BC. Now you can try to answer the questions given here. What are the major philosophical contribution of Leucippus? Why the philosophical contribution of Leucippus and Democritus are intervened? What are the views of Leucippus on universe? What are the observations of Leucippus on cosmology? 
how Aristotle refers to Lucipus. What is meant by the method of exhaustion? Now you may go through the reference books for further reading. Lives of Eminent Philosophers by D. Laetius, published by the Harvard University Press. A History of Greek Philosophy by W. K. C. Guthrie, published by the Cambridge University Press. Thank you for watching this program. We can meet again with another topic. Have a nice day.